<laughs> All right, Roundtable Podcast on location today at CrossFit Uprising. I'm your boy, Corey G, Small Arms Danny, at Trace Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Homie Jason Thomason back on the show. Listen, the show that we had with Jason uh, was episode 23, which was the end of last year. If you have not listened to it, first off, buckle up. Second off, it's like a damn Netflix special which I hope becomes like, a movie someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. But he does an amazing job at telling the story of how he got here. So you go back to that. But now that we're here, you know, opening a new business, stories out there, you're getting a chance to change people's lives again with the CrossFit gym. So, you know, catch us up on what's been going on. And, uh, man, just welcome back, bro. Thanks. It's Thanks been about a little me. less than a year. It's so fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like we said before we started was like, it's fucking fast. Yeah. Like it happened really quick. Mm-hmm. Like, so we had the episode with you guys and then we'll talk about, like, talk about that whole situation first. Right. Kyle, so, is it Mike good? Well, you can't hear. Never mind. Let go. This what I'm going to do a Kyle. Norman. Go ahead. Let's go a little closer. All here. right. So <laughs> we got done with like that episode and then it was like, it hit and everyone started like reaching out. Yeah. Like Instagram started to happen. You guys posted, but I posted and everyone was like, look, thank you. Like, make me want to be better that's cool right and it's like all this were you worried about what people were going to say once they knew um, the full story jay i mean that anybody would probably initially think that way so it's really weird like when you tell your story you usually don't tell it like that like all the way right <laughs> like, like <laughs> you were airing it out right yeah. you were like you were like you want to tell it on the podcast and i was like what uh-huh. <laughs> what what did you say <laughs> like i thought just me and you were going to sit down right yeah, yeah, so yeah. like that's cool then but you put it out like that mm-hmm and then you got nothing to hide, bro. Ever. There's nothing there, right? <laughs> yeah. No matter who you run into that's listening to it, they'll be like, yeah, I already know. I think there's something freeing about that, though. A little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. that now it's like, I mean, the story was always public knowledge. Like, yeah. you could go find what I did. Yeah. But you couldn't find the details. Yeah, yeah, The stories and the things we sit back and talk about. And your the, perspective. The way I see it, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So people start reaching out. People were this and that. And then I remember walking out that day. And I'll never forget. I just remember looking over at Cole and Cole being like. Yeah, yeah. His mouth was dropped open the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, he was like, I feel like I'm watching a documentary. Yeah. I'm like. Real talk. Okay, cool. <laughs> then you guys were all like, write a book. Yeah. Write a book. Do it. So me and Carrie talked. And I was like, I think I'll try it. I think I'll try to write a book. Yeah. So we met a friend of ours and she'd sit down and we'd sit down and have weekly talks and line it all out. And I started to write and I'd sit at the computer and I'd start to write and I'd start to write and <laughs> fucking look at it one day and I'd reread it and reread it and reread it. And I'd be like, fuck, I'm a boring writer. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got to record it, bro. <laughs> so, so do the Corey G like, move. <laughs> right. So I tell a great, like I could tell a story, but yeah. to put it on paper and pen, it's like, no, yeah, it's hard. It's dumb. I'm the same way. It's tough. Yep. So, one thing I want to touch on before that you didn't anticipate or maybe did anticipate, I don't know, but your daughter listening to the podcast. Yeah. So talk about that real quick. So I got a text one day. Um, Try not to cry. I, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Were you worried about that going in? So we had always told her. She had been asked for a long time. Yeah, yeah. She had always asked, I want to hear your story. I want to hear your story. Okay. I want to hear your story. I want to hear your story. I'm like, look, when you're older. Yeah. yeah. When Which you're is older, the you'll understand yeah. it. And we talked on the podcast, and you were like, this is probably the better way for her to hear it without not, you telling her. Because, dude, you're not going to tell it the same way. Exactly. It's impossible. So, you're going to try to sugarcoat shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? You don't need her to hear. Like, it's your yeah. daughter. You don't want your daughter to hear all that. Yeah. All of that. So, yeah. I don't know. Carrie had got a hold. I heard they started to listen to it together. And I got a text one day that was like, I listen to your podcast, and I'm so proud of you. That's so cool. And I was like, fuck, talk about tugging at heart strings, <laughs> dude. Like, <laughs> tied my gut in knots and, yeah. like, makes your chest tight. And it was like, it, it, she knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And she didn't care. That's bull because she only knows the other guy. Exactly. <laughs> That's so, why. So, yeah, it was, it was a good way of doing it. Yeah. It was a great way. It was a great way just to let her hear it. And, hear, and there's still, like I said, there's still a lot of, you know, details in it, obviously. Sure. Um, I'll never share with her. Yeah, yeah. So, like, but it was good to have her, it felt good to have her reach out and be like, look. Yeah. 
That's cool. It didn't change. You're still my dad. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's like the course. cool thing with kids. I mean, you were yeah. just telling us that, like, Andon's saying that you can't dunk. Yeah, he's and talking like, shit on me. Is it? <laughs> I'm like, bro. Nine year old's talking shit. Yeah, he's always talking shit. <laughs> like, when I had my gold chain, he's like, well, that cost $1. <laughs> like, that's just, he's a uh, forever. He's talking shit to Trey when we were at Top yeah. Golf. He's a shit talker, that's bro. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. They just don't care. No, they don't care. Yeah. They don't care. So, they, they only know wh- how you've interacted with them yeah. to that point. I mean, so it was really good to have that out. Yeah. Like that, mm-hmm. that way. You were right. It was, it was the best way it could have been done. Yeah. I, so. I, I felt like honored to be able to have a platform where you could do that, like in where like everyone, you know, obviously on our crew is super supportive to yeah. like say, man, this is, let's get it out so you can keep it moving. Mm-hmm. And then now fast forward, um, talk about what we're sitting inside of, bro. So I remember I was sitting on FaceTime one day with Carrie. And this is how it started was I was sitting on FaceTime and I must have been just feeling sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. Just like my writing sucks and I'm not going anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) I've been feeling sorry for myself about my writing suck for a long time, bro. (laughs) So she was like, yeah, "Yeah." (laughs) and not like in not so many words, she was like, what's wrong? And I said, I don't feel like I'm like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just floating. Like nothing's happening. And I suck at writing. And she was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, this is what I want to do. You know what I want to do. I want, I want to have a gym. Like, I want to run CrossFit. I want to help it's you your know, passion. do this shit. And she was like, look, I'm going to tell you right now, just keep it separate from our personal life, our mm-hmm. personal finances. She goes and just go do it. No, that's good advice. Just I go do the do same it. thing. And I was like, well, thank you. Okay. So I remember walking in talking to Jake and talking to you. Like, I'm going to do this. Homie Jake Emery, which you yeah. guys have heard on the podcast before. Go so I'm, gonna, I'm like, I'm going to do this, and, like, I just need you to be a mentor with me. Like, we've known each other a long time. I've known you as a friend and as a businessman. So I'm like, help me just be with the business. Mm-hmm. And you were like, okay, we'll do. And I walked out. That was it. That was our conversation. Yeah. And I remember sitting in the living room the next morning, and you texted me. Like, I want to back you. What do you need? And I was like, whole oh, fuck. <laughs> like, it become not just I'm going to go do this. Yeah. It become like somebody's believing in me, and now there's a lot higher expectations of myself mm-hmm. to make sure to not – honestly, in the end, it become not let you down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like don't let you down. Don't let me down. Don't let my family – like all of that came into play now. Now it's not just about me making a business, you know, portfolio and going to the bank trying to get a loan. Yeah. Now Which, by become, the way, really doesn't work that way. It sucks. <laughs> I tried. So, so yeah, I become like that. And then I come talk to you, and you were like, go talk to Jake. And I talked to Jake, and it was like things snowballed really fast, mm-hmm. like from there. Um, we went on the hunt. Like, me and Carrie sit down and talked, and we went on the hunt for a place. Like, man, I exhausted everybody I could find to try to find a location. It had to be on this end of town where we're at right now, um, away from the other two. Mm-hmm. Make sure that we're not near two other CrossFit gyms that are in town. Sure. Um, <clears throat> that way we had our own our own place and wasn't living in the shadow of someone else. Yeah, right? makes sense. So we, we went. I mean, we drove everywhere. Talked to everyone. You would hook me up with somebody. Um, and then ultimately I got in contact with a guy that we had actually looked at this location – a, like in 2016 oh, wow. here wow. for another gym I was working for. Oh, wow. Um, and I remembered it one day, and I talked to Carrie about it, and I'm like, I wonder about that. And she had done some digging for it, and she's like, well, this is the guy that sold it, like, mm. but we can't find who they sold it to. And I'm like, well, that's the guy, realtor, that I'm dealing with. Oh, wow. I'm like, that's weird. So I just asked him on the phone one day. I was like, hey, I said, the building on uh, Bryce Street, I'm like, you sold that. Is there an opening in it? He goes, give me 10 minutes. I'll call you back he called me back and he goes um can you meet me there on monday and him the owner he said he's got one coming open i was like fuck it's like let's go it was unreal <laughs> like it just it became perfect all within a few weeks we started really yeah. fucking pushing yep so i remember i pulled up and the realtor wasn't here yet he was running late and the owner was sitting in the parking lot and he opened the door and I walked in, and I'm like, don't fucking smile. Don't smile. Don't <laughs> smile. Don't smile. I'm like, it's fucking perfect. Yeah. It was it. It had an, a bathroom. It was a big, wide open square space. Perfect it starting point. It was just mm-hmm. perfect for starting. And you, how old are you, Jason? 46. 46, first business. Yeah. I think a lot of people, like, I, that. well, I want to make a big deal out of that because 
you know, a lot of people think, oh, because they're 25, they don't have a business. Or they hear the things some of these younger dudes are doing and they think they're so far behind. But, dude, you went through all that craziness, but you're so happy and you can create so much success. Yeah. And you didn't and you didn't get to start till later in life. But, that, but some people would just be like, well, it's past me. But that's not no. – but you've never uh, – you, you were like, I ain't got there yet. That's all it was. Yeah. Look, we – you talk about it at – 25 so i don't have a business yet i remember at 25 years old i was standing in the middle of a fucking prison hallway yeah with gates closing going fuck <laughs> like i'm this is fucked up i'm tired i'm yeah. tired of fucking being here i'm ready to go so like it's never past you ever it, that's my point ever it's never past like you. i mean i have it at 46 yeah right and it's just starting we're just fucking going and you're just so fucking excited because of the passion. You're finally meeting the passion <laughs> and the opportunity together. Both of them. Like, yeah. this is what I want to do, right? This is what I wanted. I wanted a CrossFit gym. And like I told you, we talked yesterday. I was like, the moments that happened the other night with, you know, people were doing qualifiers and classes coming in and they're rooting for people and they're cheering and then classes happening. And like all those moments are all encompassed into what I wanted. Yeah. It's exactly. It's happening. It, it's happening now. Yeah. It's going on. Like, there's no <laughs> You two told me one day we got ready to leave to go sign paperwork. And you and Dustin both said there ain't no feeling like walking in the office and dropping the keys yeah. on your desk. Yeah, when you own part of the business, bro, or the business, and it's part of what you're building, it changes everything. It does. It's just, especially so. from a gym meathead standpoint. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, so let's talk about, like, so – you like you see this place and stuff like that. Let's, now let's talk about like building the brand. So why CrossFit Uprising? Talk about like the color scheme and stuff like that. What so was, shout that out to Cole. Like? He's been helping with some of the gear. Yes, too. he has. <laughs> Thank you for yep. that. So um, so I had when I sit down to do this, I talked to Corey and Jake, and like I talked to some people that do marketing, and I was like, look, I I don't know jack about marketing, and you know we're gonna trade some services, and I'm gonna let you handle it. And she was like, okay. I said, look, on top of that, I said. You're going to have to, like, you're going to be the brand maker. Like, that's what I'm going to ask you to do. Like, design something that's cool, right? And Carrie would sit down, and we'd come up with some ideas, and I'd send them over to her, and she'd send some back, and we bat went back and forth about what we're looking for. And, like, finally settled on a phoenix. Like, the hardest part of this in the beginning was finding a name. Well, yeah, there's 15,000 CrossFit gyms. <laughs> yeah, so, like, finding <laughs> a name was really hard. So, like, my first thought, like, I'm in the beginning, I wanted CrossFit convicted. It just made fucking sense. I fuck with sense. that, but it, they would, <laughs> it was either taken or they wouldn't approve it. They wouldn't approve it because it was too close to another CrossFit gym is what yeah. they told me, which wasn't in their rules, but that's here and there, right? Yeah. Like, I got to abide by that. Look, my <laughs> wife sat down, and she fucking dug and dug and dug for a name that, like, would come that would match what we're doing. Like yeah. what and what you've been through. encompasses us, yeah. right? Resonate. My past and the present and where we're going. and That's the way you everything. should think about the branding, by the way. This is great fucking 101. Yeah. So, like, <clears throat> it needed to – it just didn't need to be a name. Yeah. It needed to fit everything from then until now and where we're going. And we were sitting on the couch, and she said something about, you know, uprising, and I looked it up, and it was had taken. But they had been closed for almost three years. Mm. It was already it, – they were closed, and I reached out to CrossFit, and I was like, look, how long does the name have to be off the books, closed, for me to be able to take it? And they got back to me, and they're like, well, we'd like to see it at least closed for six months mm -hmm. before somebody can take it. And I was like, well, there's this name, and I would like to have it. Is it possible? And we had sent a couple other names in and, and – divvied with them and worked all with the them names in. you came up with were good yeah this just happened to be the this one this happened ended to up. be the one that just like we settled on that was it it fit mm -hmm. um so we'd sent it in and the email come through that said you got approved it was perfect like and i always wanted a long time ago carrie had told me she had sent me this saying about a phoenix as a phoenix like the phoenix needs to burn to emerge Mm -hmm. And I've always thought about that. Like, at some point in my life, I fucking burnt myself down. I did. Like, I landed at the lowest of lows. Yeah. Sitting in a fucking courtroom getting sentenced. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I burnt myself down. You know what? And What was the number they said that day? Was it eight? Well, how many? What <laughs> no, was it? No, it was 35. 
It was 25 and then 10 for the gun and then 10 suspended. What the fuck kind of feeling do you have? <laughs> like, do you, I'm sure you remember that. Oh, I remember. Well, that. yeah, I would so, think no, you probably is, never forget that one. Well, can you even like? Put um, that in it's words probably hard all, to put it. It's all. a hard. It's a hard mix because I was still fucking young and dumb, and I don't give a fuck mm -hmm. at that point. But at the same time, you have a sinking feeling inside of you, like fuck. I just got. Yeah. I'm fucked. Like it's a long time. Yeah. Right. And you don't. I don't know any of the rules out there. Like. It, do I have to do all of it? Do I have to do half of it? Do I have so much of it before yeah. I go out for parole or release? Yeah, or you really had no clue what nothing. was about to I happen. had no idea. You know, but then the other half of it is I'm just fucking hard. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Thug life. Right? That's what <laughs> it was about. <laughs> you do got to tat it on you. Or did. <laughs> I did. So, like, it, that, you know, and it, it is. It's, and I look back on it now, mm -hmm. and now it makes my gut sink. Oh, it yeah. tightens my chest up, and it's like. Well, you're a different guy now, bro. You're so the same guy, but a different it guy. It makes me feel yeah. different now. Yeah. You know, so. So the emergence from that low moment to walking in, you know, seeing the brand, the name, you know, getting approved yep. and, and all this. It was like from start to finish. It was like a four-month process. How long was it, Jason? From you saying, because you came into, I remember he rolls into the gym. <laughs> and he's got his notebook, and he's got a bunch of stuff written out or whatever. And I remember I said something to you about like, uh, I fucking forget what I, about basically because it was the, now you got to take the chance, yep. you know what I mean? Cause that's really what okay. the big thing was. So there's a couple things that were said in this. And one of them was, one of them was my wife telling me, then just go do it. Like yeah. she gave me the approval mm -hmm. that. Yeah. She was going to, she's good with it. Right. It's cool. The other one was sitting with you in that gym that day. I'll fucking never forget. I felt like you fucking punched me in my teeth. It was fucking perfect. Like, that's what you needed. You were, you told me, you're like, in all of your life, all of the shit that you've done and you fucking lived and made it through it. <laughs> yeah. If you don't take this chance, then fuck you. And I was like, <laughs> okay. It's kind of like perspective, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you survived just, all of that exactly. to not take this. Basically, in the this grand is no scheme risk things, compared to what you already went through. In the grand scheme of things. Yeah. You took this fucking risk and you won't take this one? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Well, because I know how scared I'd be to take the risk you already took. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know and that's mean? basically what the conversation come down to. Yeah, You're yeah. like, look, I take the con – you took the risk you took in business. You'd never take the ones no. or what you would feel like to do what I did back After then. what I heard those stories, hell no. That's what I'm thinking. This dude already did the ultimate risk. This ain't risky. And it, it literally felt like you punched me in my fucking chest and took mm -hmm. the air out of me. Yeah, it was yeah. like – I walked out of there knowing that, that this was going to happen. Yeah. It's clear as day. It was. It, it, it totally wiped yeah. the screen clean and was like, fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I have that effect sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Trayvon. <clears throat> um, so, like, once you got all of this, like, together and stuff like that, I'm like, what was, like, the, like, feeling when, once you got, like, people in here for the first day and, like, you actually had a class that you put together and everything it like that? It was cool. Like, I ran, like, I, things had fell together a lot faster than I thought here like things started to, like we were waiting on a few things from the owner of the building to do his work to be able to put it down so we were waiting at one point and I'd got up to a point where I had to stop for him to do his and then once that happened like me and the two coaches and my wife and some friends like we started to push it down like it started to go the rig went up and like we were ready and I'd already had some things in the works I had to do and I wasn't ready to open when it needed to because I was leaving and I didn't want to open and then just leave. So, like, we had pushed it off to the 25th of July to when I come back. So, But we had run some a free class over July 4th. Um, we had one, well, the second class that was run that day had 36 people in it, like, in one class. It's a shit ton of people. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. It was a lot. And Danny coached CrossFit for a long yeah, time. That's yeah. a lot of fucking people. <laughs> so, people the first one it. had 18 or so in it. That's so, But that was yeah. my first class back coaching. <laughs> After three years, yeah. right? So Let's go. it was just like, all right. And then I got done, and everybody was like, a few people were like, so your first one was a little shaky. You looked like you were out of sorts. Mm. Your second one, you'd fucking right swear back at that it. you'd swear you'd never jumped out of it. You looked perfect. So it was, it was neat. Like it was neat to see it from a different side. Like I'm usually just the coach and the programmer, mm -hmm. right? Now I'm the owner. Yeah. So, like, when you stand up front of everybody, it's not just like this yeah, is it's your fucking spot. It's mine, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Something goes wrong, it's on me. If somebody, nobody can tell me 
in the end, what the fuck to do? Mm-hmm. It's so on good. me. Yeah. Right? I, I, so, so I think that's where the security's at. It is. Like, I, <laughs> I, no one, I don't have to answer to nobody. <clears throat> I don't. Like, I make the decisions I make because I feel that that's what's best for them, for the members, because that's what I'm shooting for. I want to find what's, I want to know what's best for them and what works best for them, and I want to find their fucking max potential. That's what I want. What are they fully capable of? Mm-hmm. I'm going to find it. Mm-hmm. I will. So when it opened and it was like, oh, here comes the first day, we'd already been rolling some. Like I'd, got, I'd run some classes to let the coaches get up to speed because like I had a coach that needed to be up to speed on the way I program, right? Mm-hmm. I, look, me and Corey's been over this numerous times. I am aggressive. I'm super aggressive with programming. Um, Same. But I also <laughs> but I also know how to coach it, right? Yeah. And I need them to be up to speed on coaching that too. Um, so, like, I'd run some just, hey, I'm going to invite a few people in, let you guys coach, and I'll sit back. And then you can manage the class and see how the hour runs. This is the way the program is going to be. Super important. <laughs> it's, I Big mean, time. I've seen so many examples of, a you know, something going wrong or, like, even, like, a coach being singled out or, like, you're over here just, like – you know, nails on a chalkboard because you want to, like, jump in and, right. you know. So, like, Do you ever struggle it was, with that it part? Was, oh, yeah, a yeah. lot. So, no, number one, I'm a doer. Like, yeah. I would fucking, hey, I need you to do this, and you'll start it, and I'll just push you out of the way. I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. So, like, exactly. sitting back and watching a coach that doesn't coach in my style mm-hmm. is hard for me. Sure. Right? But I, I understand now more having my place is, like, I need them to have their style. So, like, it's hard in the beginning to, like, I need you to coach in my style. No, you don't. Their yeah. style around your programming. Exactly. That's yeah. what it becomes yeah. now, right? So now I'm dealing – now I'm learning to deal with that is sit back and relax. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll develop their own style. Yeah. And it'll be fine. Manage your time. And let's be on the same page in the way that we teach it, though. Yeah. You know, everyone's got different cues. Everyone, I'm going to tell you something that may not work for Corey. So, like, the cues and what works for you is going to be different, but the way we teach it is going to be the same. I need that across the board. So At the core. At the core of it, that's what it is. Yeah. So. We're going to go to a commercial break. I'm just going to put a little pressure on Danny because Cole's question was great. Trey's question was great. Danny, after the break, is going to have his turn to get his (laughs) question. Small arm says right. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, basically, it's kind of small arm says. We'll see. All right, let's go to commercial. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max from Muscle. With us is the Director of Sports Performance, Mr. Tyler Treadway. Treadway. Hey guys, uh, Mr. Tyler Treadway here today. You know this NSF thing that's on this bottle? This says that everything that's in this label is exactly what's in this label. And so that means that every athlete or anybody around here that's trying to make sure they don't test positive for steroids, they can take our products. And I got beat by Corey today at basketball, and that sucks. Back to you, Cole. <laughs> 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 that was fucking amazing. All righty. Well, uh, thank you, Troy. <laughs> back to the show. <clears throat> and we're back. Thank you, Mr. Troy. That was amazing. Uh, yeah. Yes, you got it. All right. So, <laughs> back to Corey. That's all. Oh, hey, talking. guys. What's up? We're back here at the round table. All right, Danny, uh, time for your question to Jason. <laughs> time for my question. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking about, obviously, you were at multiple gyms prior to opening your own gym, right? Yes. So, like. What were some of the things that you want? Like, it could be one thing, three things, whatever, or whatever it is. But what are one of three things that were like really glaring to you that you wanted to change or be different in your gym? That was a great question, Danny. It is a great question. I was sitting on that one because very, I, very cause like when I moved to Chicago, for example, it was a shot in the dark because my expectation was really high because I was coming from CrossFit Grandview, where like Holmberg. Yes. Brandon, they were coaching. So I had a really high expectation. And so it took me like six tries. And I felt like I saw the entire spectrum from like someone who's like an OG a little bit, Danny. You've been coaching for a minute, bro. Yeah. Um, But like pretty much, uh, you you know, I went from like a coach that like clearly maybe had coached three months maybe and didn't really know what to do, how to scale, keep someone safe, whatever. Or somebody that struggled in a big setting didn't really know what to do or like maybe it was the equipment i don't know there's a billion things yes. so um i probably have two that were really really glaring to me one of them was is being able to include everybody everybody from 
your 70-year-old grandma mm-hmm. to your 40-year-old male or female that somebody's been sitting around for, you know, since high school or college and haven't done anything, took a desk job, mm-hmm. to your elite athlete, right? Um, like, it to me, you can put all of them people in one class setting and get the best out of all of them and use each of them to do that. You, number one, have to care as the coach. thousand percent. You have to care, yeah. period. That's it. Yeah. Care about them and what they need and what they want. Because there are two different things here. The elite athlete has a need. Mm-hmm. They don't have a want. You're an elite. It's what you need. Yeah. The 80-year-old grandma has a want. I want to live longer. I want to be healthier. I want to move in for 10, 15 more years. Mm-hmm. Some so, gems like, right you here, need to be able to do both of those. And to yeah. do that, you need to care about both of them. Yeah. So, like, I felt over the years I've seen a lot of pushing out of one of those or the other and catering to a certain, I don't want to call it demographic, but. No, you it know, happens. But I think it's a lot of people hearing warm. you say that would be interesting because they think you're only for the crazy. <laughs> Look. But but that the, you just it, saying you're that true. is showing that it's not. It is. And a lot of people say it. A lot of people say Jason's all about the competition. For yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. right. For yeah. me, I am. I'm a competitor. I'm not going to lie about that. Like, yeah. I am. But, like, that doesn't mean that that's the way everybody that walks through my doors needs to be. Yeah. It isn't. <clears throat> Do you want to be? Okay, then that's a discussion we have to have. Do you just want to come in here? Hey, I, I had a shoulder surgery three years ago and – like, I sat on the couch and didn't do anything, and now I'm out of shape. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then let's get you back in shape. We got something for you. Right? I do. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that was one of the biggest things that needed. I needed everyone to feel like they were, they were welcome here, not for just sure. the competitor side because that's what I do. Well, like, think about how many times you've dropped into a place or whatever, and you feel like the coach is just kind of, like, punching the in and out clock, right? So but, I have a prime example of that. Yeah. We, went, me, we were on our way on vacation one three or four years ago. We were on our way down south, and we stopped at a box to work out at noontime. We walked in, and we didn't even know who the coach was until they called us to the board. Oh, wait, yeah, you, you, we talked about this. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I was standing there, and all of a sudden he tells us what to do. Well, it's a good thing me and my wife have crossfitted because we knew what to do. So we go work out. They start to work out. There's no demo. There's no nothing. Like, really? You don't get shit. Before the weights and everything were put away, I'll never forget when Carrie looked at me and she goes, well, he couldn't wait to get out of here. You turned and he had grabbed his workout shoes and was walking to the other side of the gym already to work out before class was ever over. Yeah. I fucking hate that. So unfortunate. Right? It is. Because for one, the people there probably don't know any different. That's what they're used to. And if you would introduce them people to a fucking coach that cared – that talk, walked around and talked to them in the beginning be, when they're warming up and find out where they're at and what their goals are and what their needs are and what scales they may need, Yeah, then people's minds would be fucking blown. Guaranteed. That's the thing, to circle back to the caring thing because, like, so many coaches don't do that because it's like maybe they actually have a specific goal, but they just never have told you before. So and that's a like, good, what, do you, what do you want? That's a good lead into my number two. Yeah. Perfect. My number two is, is I want to know what every one of my members' goals are. Yeah. Eventually, I want to know, and I want to check in with them every six to eight months and know, are we meeting that? Well, there's something there, whether they say no at the beginning or not. Look, you'll find them, right? You're going to find them people that go, I just want to work out. Yeah, super common (laughs) to say that. I just want to come in and sweat and get a good workout. No, you don't. There's something there. No, I'm trying to get sexy out here. (laughs) trying to look good naked <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, boy. yeah and we'll, and we'll find it though like i want to dig it out of you eventually what is that goal be like yeah. how about Corey's goal yeah. jason <laughs> i'm trying to look sexy out here I'm trying to be a you know what it could be something <laughs> it could be something as that simple as that yeah, yeah. you get a, it's confidence you get a it is yeah you get a female that walks in here and says, i want to look better naked okay well cool. then we do i that. need you to eat eat a certain eat a certain way and come and do the training yeah. follow the program lots of squats Lots of squats. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely what Danny's goal is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You look good naked. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to look Yeah, I mean, naked, everyone right? does. Yeah. Am I wrong? No. <laughs> you are not wrong. All right, back to you, Cole. 
Uh, I, I don't know where to go from that. No? They look <laughs> good naked? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess so. Let's, like, in what ways are you trying to, like, create the environment that you want and envision? So I, ran, I read something once. When I started this, I started to read things. And Carrie had sent me this thing from this thing I'd read. And it was, like, nine things that gym owners should do. Like, you should, things you should fall into. People it. love lists. And more majority of them yeah, were true. Them. Like, and one of them was I never understood this. This part I never understood because I was just the programmer and the coach, right? Because mm-hmm. oh, I was always part of the community. Yeah. Right? Now I'm the owner. And when I, don't, I didn't read it, maybe she had heard it and Carrie explained it to me, was like, you don't build the community as the owner. You build the culture. Hmm. from the culture the community will take care of itself yeah that makes sense and i was like what like, <laughs> what was that yeah so it didn't make sense to me i had to i had to think about it longer and, and, and then the doors open and now people are coming and i'm starting to understand that mm-hmm. i don't do the community they handle the community yeah they're the community i handle the culture the expectation that's what it is i have super high expectations of people coming through that door I need a, I'm going to ask a lot of you, a lot. How are you setting the stage, like, for when they come in? Like, whether it's 10, 15 minutes before the class. Like, what are you doing? Are you throwing some music on? Walk, are you I doing some light, curls as they walk in? What? Right. They got to see that I still do <laughs> curls. Smoke, money. Smoke machine. Right. What's going on? He's talking to his arm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, that's what happens if you have Danny as one of your celebrity coaches they, one there. time. <laughs> I asked where'd him that, one. Where'd that mirror come from? <laughs> <laughs> Danny brings in Danny the Walmart mirror. It <laughs> it's like propped up on the boxes. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's sliding. It's on wheels. Yeah. It's yeah. He, he, can wheel, he can wheel it around when he's coaching and be like, yes. yeah, I'm going to stand right in front of it Ooh, and coach. Got that light. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we made fun of him in the first place because I met him on the Preacher Curl. I mean, that's oh, basically shit. like when he came to my gym, he just lived on so Preacher Curl. Your Preacher Curl. Yeah. yeah. There. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then. And then he really didn't do bodybuilding. He was a crossroader, but his arms were always huge. So that's why that's where the small arms shout thing came from. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> shout out 28 Method. <laughs> no free shout outs. We've all had that pump. That's all right. awesome. Uh, yeah, um, sorry. sorry. Set, set, really yeah, sidetracked. Yeah, 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 sorry. So Setting the stage. I yeah. need like people to understand when they come in to show, number one, show them I care. Right? Yeah. I care about what their day was like, how they sleep, how they eat. Like, so basically just talk to them when they come in. You yeah. can read a lot from people. Right? Oh, yeah. So I'd said it to you guys once before on the last one. I was like, I didn't survive fucking eight years in prison from not being able to read somebody. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> like, you just learn to read people. Mm-hmm. So you can get a lot just from asking how was your day, how people react to you. Right? So mill around. Talk to them. Find out where they're at. Like, what kind of scale? What kind of workout do you need today? Yep. Like, fuck, I had a shitty day at work. My boss jumped my ass and – or I got fired or whatever. And it's like, okay, now I know where you're at. So now <laughs> like, I know how to style your workout. You're having a bad day. I'm just going to put you in the corner, minimally coach you, make sure you're safe, give you some cues, let you work. You don't need nobody to bother you today. You've been bothered enough. That's so huge because people respond so differently. Some people are just like, please get the fuck away from me. Yep. I just want to do my shit. That's true. Yeah. Right. And then you have the other people that beg for be something. Yeah. Like, when I first started this, the marketing people put out a survey. Like, they were put out a survey to everyone that signed up on a wait list for, like, hey, Jason's opening a gym. And everyone was like, what? Mm-hmm. Fuck. Huh? <laughs> okay. So they got on this wait list, and, one, and the survey had questions on it. And one of the questions was, what do you want from your gym? What do you dislike about your gym? What do you want? Like, what, what's the number one want? The number one want that come across out of majority of those 140 50 people that answered that survey was I want to push I need pushed somebody then people need accountability Mm -hmm. that's what it is right they need to be held accountable for what they're doing and I do that Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure if you want pushed you're going to get pushed period one of the answers on there was I want to know I want the expectation that when my coach gets close I'm going to go harder because he expects that from me Okay. Fuck with that. So, re, right? Like, you yeah. want them people. Like, I, those people want push. They want it. And I'm going to give that to you. Whether it's writing what I write on the whiteboard or the way I tell you you should do the workout 
or walking by you just being in your presence makes you want to go harder. Yeah. It's even cooler, too, when you see, like, the evolution of someone when they start to, like, three, six months, nine yep. months down the road, and then they start getting hungry, and they're, like, starting to push themselves or doing that extra So rep. I have that now. Mm, you yeah. said Cody's really digging this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, Jake, Jake's, Jake's uh, business, uh, business partner. Business partner. He comes over. So oh, sick. Yeah. from the first time, like, I may have messed up with him in the beginning, the first day. Um, I probably almost killed him. Like, yeah, he said he couldn't feel his arms for six hours. Yeah, so like, <laughs> <laughs> I asked him about it the he other day. He actually said he was driving up the road and doubted whether he should be driving. <laughs> like, he's like, fuck, should I even be driving? Because like, he put, yeah. basically he had a good poker face, didn't he? Fucking great. Well, he's a military like, guy. Like, I never yeah. thought that he was that bad, right? <laughs> like, I, he didn't present himself as that yeah. bad. Put him on the rower, had him do some burpees. And, I, and like, <laughs> he died off a little bit. But he still got up and still went back to work. And I'm like, all right, he's all right. He milled around up here with me for about 20 minutes. And I said, you all right? He goes, yeah. He goes, yeah. Yeah. And he just kept telling me, yeah. And you couldn't see it. Yeah. That's the moment where I tell somebody, like, I can read you to a certain point. When that reading is done, I don't know what's going on inside you. That was that moment. And he <laughs> said he went home and laid on the couch for like four hours, finally could feel his <laughs> arms again. And then he thought – but this is like his lunchtime workout. He's like, fuck, I can't even work. <laughs> He's, like, I can't <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm going to have to figure something out. So, but then, but to your point, so, though, he said – He's handled it ever since yes. then, and he's been and great. And watching that happen, that's, the, uh, that's one of the people that sticks out in my head is, like, watching him then yeah. to watching him now, I don't have to push him. Mm -hmm. I just have to give him the path, and he pushes himself now. Yeah. And I just cool. check with him at the end. Are we still good here? Yeah, He's yeah. like, yeah, I'm good. He goes, gets in the truck and he drives off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like being able to see that evolution happen and it's only been a four weeks with him. Yeah. You know, right. So it's like, I didn't just look at him in class and see it happen. I can see him go. Oh, yeah, he's pushing himself. His yeah. son uh, worked out with Dustin's son the other day, and he uh -huh. came in wearing yeah. his CrossFit Uprising shirt, and you could tell he was excited to talk about it and that's that he's sick. making some progress. So yes. that's really cool. So, yeah. And it, it is great. Like. And I've had everybody, like, I've had to deal with, like, people that haven't done anything for years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they haven't worked out at all. Um, people that used to work out somewhere and then whatever happened, happened. They went home and quit working out. They're ready to come back. I've had people that were at other gyms that talk about how my programming is more aggressive and it is better. And we do weight lift here to have to deal with those people talk about that percentage i think danny daniel like that too yeah uh, and, and then you get the person that has been working out so you have to deal with all of those right as they come in the door and know where they're at um and, and that's why it's so important to talk to them it <laughs> is yeah because you don't know right like i've had you know people that you have to eliminate parts of the of the movement to be able to get them to move mm -hmm. right correctly and then slowly add pieces <clears throat> of it in for sure so and what Corey was just referring to is like um, the system I use for programming and tracking mm -hmm. um, has what it's called insights. So if I label every movement through the week up what they are, it'll label it a weightlifting, monostructural, or gymnastics for me. And uh, so as I program, I go in and program, and then I go back and I look at the insights. What's the percentage of what we do for the week? Mm. Um, so I went back. Somebody had said something in here the other day. They were talking about the barbell. Like, fuck, we're doing more barbell. And they were happy. Like, they were super happy. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, no one should ever walk out of here and feel like they don't weight lift enough. Yeah. And they were like, what do you mean? On that system, you go in and look, and you click that insights. It tells you the percentage of movements you do that week. That's It'll cool. tell you 50% weightlifting, 25 monostructural, 25 gymnastics. Since I've opened, that's what it's been. It's been a minimum of 50% weightlifting, 25% monostructural, 25%. Lift fucking weights. <clears throat> Just keeps you between the, the rails, right? It, it, it makes it, it <clears throat> helps me to really put in perspective making sure that things are broad, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I need. And like, balanced, yeah. I need to balance things out for everybody. Sure. Like, and to me, 33s across the board don't get it. You should be weightlifting. It's more beneficial in the end for everybody mm -hmm. to be stronger. For older women with osteo, you know, they start to have bone loss. 
weight lift. You're young. You should be strong. You're older, an older gentleman that falls down. You need to be able to get back up. Mm -hmm. All the answers come back to lifting weights. I've been saying this shit forever. Lift fucking weights. Lift be weights. Way, way, way more cool. And then <laughs> stay jacked. Stay, <laughs> stay jacked, stay jack, my friends. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then add in, I need to rate, elevate your heart rate daily. Yep. Right? To stay healthy. Like you should have your heart rate elevated daily. And you know? just taking up the whole hour. That's a big part. A lot of gyms kind of cut it short of the water is 12 tell minutes. You, Let me get the fuck out of I'm here. I'm going to tell like, you right now, you'll never, ever fucking worry about that here. Normally, it's fucking over. Yeah. yeah. And the, like, we have a 15-minute buffer, right? And that 15-minute buffer wasn't to run over. The 15-minute buffer between class and the afternoon had to do with the community. Yeah. I created a culture and a, and, and a rule that would allow the community at the door to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were done. People are coming in. Yeah. I don't have to rush a group out to rush a group in. Yeah, they can chop I it can up. allow that to happen. The people leaving can talk about, man, that fucking lot sucked. That yeah. was horrible. You yeah, should, get you, ready. You should probably just totally. leave now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, you have 15 minutes to run. Yeah. Like, That's so, like, hilarious. You know like, what I mean? Jason so it sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> don't go in there. Yeah. So, like, allowing that to happen. Yeah, fuck with that. So mm -hmm. That's a good strategy. That's just chess, bro. To me, that's like chess, not checkers. Uh, talk about a couple things, and because a lot of people, I mean, we're talking about a bunch of great stuff, are, right? Yeah. But let's talk about. All right, I own my own business now. This kind of caught me by surprise, or this fucking punched me in the face, or this was surprising. You know, because look, it's a glass half full type of thing. Yes. Because you're positive about what you got going on. You came a long ways. The phoenix is fucking rising. But then you're like, all right, I still got to deal with this, this, and this, because everyone does. Um, so what's a couple things that caught you off guard, maybe? Or maybe look, you just I own it. my own gym, right? Yeah. I should be able to work out anytime I want. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you run into time. Yeah. Right? You, you sink. And time gets away from you at times. You're mm. working on programming or you want to spend time with your family or of course. coaching or, oh, fuck, there's another – bug in the system i gotta go in and talk mm. to them people and get that yeah, run your business and, right <laughs> yeah so training goes to the, to the wayside because that's really not the most important thing not right the second is not right now yeah. until things get lined out um we opened at a point in time where one of the coaches was working night shift so he wasn't available during the day mm. so i had to cover more mm. you know what i mean until now he's back and now things are starting to get even back out um that, was that weird for you? The training not being the majority? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah because tough. for three years I worked on me. Yeah. Right? That's, I why, worked, I, that's why I end up working out at four in the morning. <laughs> I, worked, <laughs> I worked on me and being fucking 30th and 40, 36th and 40th in the world hmm. in my age group. Like, I worked on that and to, to coming into doing this and being like, fuck, I, am I going to be able to do anything today? Are you going to be able to work out? Are you going to be able to train? Fuck, I got this to do and I got to go run and do this and I got to talk to this guy and I got to call them and I got to – like yeah. it just happens until I find that new norm yeah. and how to do that. Mm -hmm. so, so that was one of the big that ones. That was one of the biggest ones. Like mm -hmm. it went from my training to. What training. about just like you said it earlier about it's all, it all rests on me. Like not, obviously you have support. I do. You have us, you got your, the wifey, you got plenty of support, but still at the end of the day. And it's the same thing I talk when I, when we talk about the max effort business, like these guys is all ride or dies. But then when I have to make the decision yeah. or, you know, I'm always transparent about what's going on. But it's like still when you're the, the ultimate decision maker, it still rides on you. It right. Does. So what's that? Uh, you've obviously uh, embraced it. But is it weird? Does it feel comfortable? Like what's the it's getting better. OK, good like, answer. it's getting better. So like in the beginning, it was weird. Mm -hmm. Like I've all never had that. Never had that. Yeah. Never had where fuck. So in the end, in the beginning, honestly, I just leaned on my wife a lot. Like, yeah. what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> yeah. What do you think? And it's like, look, we've had arguments over it. Sure. Everything. Like we've gone, you know, toe to toe about things. And in the end, she's like, in the end, it's your decision. You know what I mean? In the mm -hmm. end, it's yours. And like, she fucking, she's been there through everything. So like in the end, it is mine. And I'm starting to, all right, you know what? I just got to make that decision. Yeah. So, like, I'm. it's getting better That's about cool. that feeling, you know? So, like, my next decisions are what to do with certain classes, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, 
when I needed to make a decision, for example, is like the nine o'clock class becomes a class that were a lot of teachers. So, and, and the other people that aren't teachers that come to nine, they can come to noon. Got it. So like my decision needs to be for the winter time and through the school year, do away with the nine and then have the noon or keep the nine and it doesn't, it, it attracts one or two people Yeah. where I could make m more better business decisions. And in the beginning, it was like, what do I do? Hmm. Like, should I ask everybody? Should yeah. I <laughs> survey? Should I talk to people? <clears throat> Um, and now it's like, I'm going to make this decision. Yep. So like I made a decision to eliminate the two open gyms that were at night because I feel that people get enough with my programming. Yeah. They don't need that. They time. don't need that time at night. So I took them away and made 515, which is in between two classes, an open gym class time hybrid. So people staying want to stay after one or come in early for one, for one. Once again, creating culture and environment. Exactly. So like I had to make that decision and it was like, I'm going to make this decision. I'm oh. going to do this. Yeah. Because <clears throat> that's if you see the narrative really in your head, this is how I want shit to operate. That's what I always try to do. Like it's stuff I would see even like the facility that we're in now. Like I saw all that in my head first. I didn't know where it was going to be. Or, you know, how big it would or how it would be all the way set up. But I saw that that concept. And so when things are rolling, I'm like, ah, I really want it to be like this. You know what I mean? And you know, like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Yep. It needs to work like this. And you might as well make these changes early because then you can always. And that's the other thing is you can always change it back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and those are the things I have to, like, embrace. Yeah. Is the fact that, you know what, it's not like it's an ultimate decision. Oh, you know man. what I mean? If if 47 people come to me tomorrow and be like, hey, don't do away with the nine. We'll all come. Well, yeah. then I'm going to expect you all to come and I'll open it back up. Sure. E easy. Yeah. Right. It, it's not like I'm taking away the nine and it's gone forever. Sure. So like, yeah, it's it's been. Part of me is like scared to make those decisions because I've never had to do it. Yeah, that's honest. And the other part of me is like fuck, it's mine. You got to make a decision sometime. Yeah. Might as well go ahead and do well, it. But those are what happens in everybody's brains. <laughs> and then you just start to go, I'm just going to listen to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Not you know, this and, other guy. And, and I'm, and I'm trying to embrace what you just said is like, if I make that decision, yeah. can I reverse it? Of yeah. Course. Most of the time you can. Yeah. So, wow. What a, what a long ways in eight or nine months. So out in the open, <laughs> like on this out in the open, I'm going to tell you, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, bro. Thank you very much yeah, man. for all, all of this. It was easy. For, for believing in me. Mm -hmm. I've always believed in you. you, just, you were, it was just finally time for you to believe I all know. the way in yourself. So, <laughs> um, I believe I know, in everybody I really fuck with. And I, I mean, know Jake will hear it, so thanks, Jake. Yeah. Jake on Salmo. And Salmo. Like, Our squad is fucking it's pretty crazy. solid. <laughs> Thank you to my wife for, like, fuck. Shout yeah. out. Yes, shout out very much so <laughs> i would say we always say no free shout outs i'd guess that shout out is definitely not free no she been fucking <laughs> <laughs> not at all <laughs> that one is not free yeah. fellas. So you've been working for that one please believe me when i say that one's not free <laughs> she deserves it uh where can everybody find you jason um Social. i'm on instagram at tomlinson underscore three um and facebook in the gym is. um cr at crossfit uprising and then go ahead and shout out the location. We are at 982 Bryce Street, Newark, Ohio. There you um, go. Fuck, come check it out. <laughs> yeah. September 3rd. September 3rd. September 3rd, like 3rd official is up. official grand opening. We're going to have a cookout. Fuck yeah. I told Corey, fucking bring all you guys. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that would be fun. We're trying to get everyone. So we're trying to make it kind of like the <clears throat> day that if you have family members that talk about CrossFit. Yeah. And then your family member looks at you like you're dumb. <laughs> like, why are you talking about this again? That's the day to take that person and show them what you do. Yeah, it's cool. Bring them in and maybe they'll see the community and talk to other members and talk to me and be realize that, wow, what you're talking about is kind of cool. I want to go try it. Yeah. Come try it. We need to clip that so we can yeah. use that on Instagram. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny at Trace Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cool Susak. Jason Thomason, Thank always you. a pleasure, my brother. For sure. We are out. <laughs> <laughs>